Hey guys, it's Tim. Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. Don't know the mind my hands, but the hands are moving. Uh, first time to the channel, first time to live stream, welcome! On these live streams, we talk about a to truck topic, or if I have a Prestone, the Prestone gods give me a vehicle, we talk about the vehicle I'm driving, which I'm without a vehicle this week, or we sit around and talk about what you want to talk about. So it's kind of your chance to meet me, the creator, and my home studio, and see the stuff on my wall, and pour a drink and have a good time. So... That's basically the gist. Um, welcome for being on the channel. Welcome all the stuff you guys are doing. It's so awesome. Uh, the channel is exploding and it's fantastic to watch. Really steady growth too. So before I get into the questions, and I want to address something real fast, I, I have two announcements. Uh, number one is that, and I, I'm going to, so I'm, three announcements. I'm going to do uh, two announcements and then, hey guys, and I'm going to talk to you about um, the truck, what we can expect, the 2021 F-150, we'll get into that in a minute. But uh, number one is that uh, there will be no live stream next week. I'm sorry. I apologize. Wipe the tears. Um, there's a family issue I have to address in Michigan. I'm heading to Michigan tomorrow, so I uh, will not be back until late Tuesday night. So I will try to do something Wednesday. or Well, Thursday is men's league golf, so I will try to do something for you guys. I'll try to make it up for you guys. But, uh, yeah, there will not be any um, live stream next week. Number two. Uh, Joe had talked about this uh, as a joke, as where's the golf channel, and I am actually going to work on this. I've decided that I'm going to make my personal channel, my team, team, I don't know what team came from, my Tim Estradal channel, uh, my personal uh, YouTube channel. I will be changing that channel. I've, I've been kicking this around for a long time, and if I decided I'm going to do it, I'm going to create a journalist, golf, father, working around the house, hunting, random stuff I do, kind of my lifestyle will kind of go on that channel. So that way I can keep, this channel will stay news and uh, reviews and stuff that's pertinent. And for those guys who want to, well, see how far I hit a golf ball, be able to check out that channel. So I am working on some strategies to get that up as fast as possible, but I have to go to Michigan, so I uh, will not be getting that out this week as I had planned. But I am doing, I will be working on that while I'm gone, and I will be updating that channel. Um, there's 35 subscribers, and if I get you all to kind of go over there a little bit. I can get that monetized pretty quickly, and I can do a lot more fun videos over there and uh, bring out more of a personality. That'll be fun. So that is that is coming. I, I decided I'm going to do it. I have some new golf clubs I want to show, share on there, and I have my well, practical golf and my hunting and just stuff I want to show you guys that doesn't really fit this channel, and when I've looked at the views and the videos I've done like that, it doesn't really fit. So I want to do something a little bit separately and then maybe time together. So that's what's going to happen. Um, we're going to, uh, my brother's, he's fine. Um, he's just, I gotta, how do you guys know about that stuff? You guys are well up on the stuff. Uh, yeah, I can talk whiskey on the Tim channel. I can talk, I mean, I, I'm going to, I'm going to go full bore lifestyle on that channel. So if you guys really want to do more of that stuff, I'll do the channel. Uh, Nick asked about improvements to 3.0 liter diesel. That has been delayed as far as I know. I, I was looking at the videos before I came on and I have two 2021 F-150 videos one interior and one engine, and the engine video you want to check out, Nick, um, I will see if I can get uh, that to put up, but if you type in 2021 engines, you'll find that video, Nick, it's about six minutes long, I really cut to the chase, and there were some details out, I can tell you that diesel, as from my understanding, is going to be delayed. I think I'll... <laughs> All right, so no hunting golf balls. So let's, let's talk about the F-150, because I want to make sure... If you're here for that topic, we'd address that first. And I want to be fair to you guys, the audience. So if you didn't know, there's been a bunch of spy photos. But let's go ahead and I'll put these on the screen. Um, you can see this is the exterior they're talking about, the new 2021. Um, it's kind of covered up. But as I go, you'll see. Oh, oh I, I, I see what I got to do. I got to do uh, turn on this. And you can see the new kind of front grill. And let me show you the front grill. Da -da -da, for my friends at FordAuthority.com. You can see the new front grill um, and LED lights, the daytime running lights. And there's a four pack of lights there, which is pretty interesting. Um, I, I maybe the F250 has got the same thing. F650. I apologize tonight. I have um, uh, been distracted the last couple of days with some family issues. So you guys, let me know in the comments. I may not. Uh, I may not be able to uh, respond as much as I want to. But anyways, I want to. I want to look at the exterior uh, rear end, and so that's the exterior rear end. I guarantee you those are some different LED lights back there, and I hope I hope they move the sensors for the uh, backup lights and rear cross traffic alert. 
That way, you don't have to spend so much money replacing that damn tailgate, the tail lamp of a bus. If you remember, the Edmonds uh, took a baseball bat and busted that tail, busted the rear end. They see how much it cost to replace, and it was more expensive to replace the tail lamps than it was the uh, aluminum bed sides. Let's talk interior. There's the interior with the big screen. The big topic on the screen is that A, it is horizontal instead of vertical. If you've noticed, most of the big screens are vertical. This is horizontal, and so that's a lot different view. I'll be really curious to see if people like the horizontal or the vertical. It's kind of one of those things. Um, there is a dedicated heat seated heat heated seat button, which is pointed out, and some other comments, and that's an improvement. Usually, the heated seat button now is in the sync system, and that's kind of a pain to get to, especially if your Tukas is freezing. Uh, and then we have the dash, which is all digital. It's a really blurry photo of it, but you can see that dash. I'm going to go back to interior one as well, and you can see... Um, the steering wheel is a little bit different too. It looks like a different setup on the steering wheel, and uh, yeah, just a whole lot kind of different interior. So, uh, June twenty fifth of twenty twenty. Let me go back to this. So, in just a few weeks, in just a few weeks, we will have the new twenty twenty one Ford F one fifty that will be unveiled. I am disappointed that it's going to be an online reveal. I don't like the online reveals. I don't get to touch it. Don't get to feel it. Don't get to get an idea of the size. I don't get to do much. It's just. It, it, I, I don't like online reveals. As a journalist, I don't think it's going to be very interesting. So um, I'm going to go back to this topic here. Mix two hunt couple. Oh yeah, I did that. Uh, Brian is here. Brian's looking around. Broken open window. Broken open some window for two. I, I learned that the um, liquor store in town has Angel's Envy, and I met a new friend. His name is Brad. He works for uh, Bandon Outdoors, which is owned by Avery, and uh, he has got a ton a uh, ton of decoys and he's getting into deer hunting we're talking about doing some goose hunting out in wyoming this fall and uh, pheasant hunting and such so yes yeah, so i will uh, my plan is hey bark my plan is to mix the two a little bit i will have truck reviews here i'll link to the hunting videos in the other channel and i will do that kind of stuff plus golf stuff that kind of thing so um, i did some deer hunting mixing with trucks on this channel and I just, I don't know if, I, if I'm doing it wrong, but I just can't seem to grow the audience that way. So I thought maybe a different channel would make more sense. Uh, Bronco comes with manual, zero turn. Too. Yeah, like the, like the uh, uh, was it the Rivian that has a zero turn? I think so. And um, it'd be interesting. I, I, I just want the Bronco to come out. It was supposed to come out at the end of April, and now that's been pushed back. So, yeah. hey, Brian Finn is here, and I got to call out Brian Finn and applaud him. And, yeah, exactly. Juan won't watch the hunting channel. That's fine. Different audiences. Uh, Brian has done golf clap for Brian. Brian has done a solid. Um, I know kids still say that anymore. Anyways, Brian took notice that uh, I have not been uploading as many videos as I've had in the past. And fair criticism. I've been working on the house, and I've had like a family issue come up. I got to leave for Michigan tomorrow, and I have not put up the volume that maybe you guys were accustomed to. And he did point that out. However, I did point out to him. Haha! I have 600 darn videos on this channel. Hello, 600, and I should be able to coast a little bit on having 600 videos. And uh, he, this weekend, went back and watched some of these older videos and made comments on them. So I challenge everybody in this live stream, and everyone who's going to watch this live stream, so they get like 800 views in this live stream, so they go live after they get processed, to go to choose an old video. To go to my homepage, the YouTube homepage of YouTube.com and the channel, Pick Up Truck Talk, whatever, and uh, find an old video and watch an old video. Brian did it, and he watched... I don't know how many videos he watched, but he watched quite a few and left comments, and it was pretty fun. He pointed out some videos that I hadn't seen in a couple years. I've been doing this for, uh, what am I, two, three years now, something like that range, and I have 600 videos, and so uh, 601 or whatever it is these days, they don't count live streams, so I could even, even if you got the live streams, I probably have 750 or so videos. I probably, my, uh, my uh, tube buddy doesn't count live streams for whatever reason, but anyways. And, and, and if every live stream is an hour, I mean, I got, like, you could binge watch this channel for, like, a week and see everything then. I, I can't figure out how many hours that is. There's no way to figure that out, apparently. There's no algorithm I can find or app or whatever the hell I need to find. But anyways, I'm thinking, you know, like, an hour of watching this stuff, you could see everything. Or not an hour. Seven, seven days. Seven days. I got distracted by something else. So I always get these comments about how red my face is. My, my sister-in-law made a comment about this earlier. You guys know I'm out in the sun a lot, right? And tonight, if you notice, I have a fan on. Well, you don't notice this. There's a fan on. I'm going to tell you this right now. 
There's a fan on. I think I said it three times. There's a fan on. Anyways, the fan is going, and uh, that fan is keeping everything nice and cool. I have a nice cool drink. I don't. I'm, I've decided not to drink whiskey in the summer because it gets me too hot. Because it's so it's a winter drink, and uh, so yeah, I have a I have a cool drink, iced down. My face complexion looks good because I don't have my uh, my selfie lights not going. So there you go. For all those people that leave comments about how red my face is and why don't I use SPF 9000 or something, and I use SPF every single time I go outside. Um, there. All right. I'm uh, 10 minutes in. I think I answered all the questions. That's it. Are we going to go to bed? No. All right. Uh, Jeff said, oh, electric version of F-150. So, yes, there will be an electric version of F-150. I think that's going to be delayed until... 20, 21, 22, 23 cent range because they uh, seem like they cannot, uh, electric trucks are hard to, to bring to market. I think what you'll find is you'll find a hybrid will be announced. I think you'll find the EcoBoost be announced, the F1, the 5.0 liter gas will be announced. Um, the high output 3.5 is up for a question right now. I'm not sure they're going to continue that because there's conversations about the um, Raptor making a change. So there's some questions about that. I think you'll find those three powertrains will be announced. I think the diesel is delayed based on the video I did on the powertrains, and the electric is delayed. I think so. You're going to see they'll come with their core powertrains, a core reveal. You'll see a new grill. You'll see a new interior, new exterior lights and tail lamps. So he's walking outside, and you'll see a new um, outside like that and interior. Um, they'll probably change around the trim levels a little bit, and you'll see those powertrains. Um, and I, I don't recall, but I believe that they're all going to come at 10 speed, probably. Um, I, and there won't be a manual. So that's kind of my thing. Uh, looks like Tundra. <laughs> looks very massive. Holly Davidson F-150. Those, those things are expensive. Holy cow. Hey, David, give me five bucks. Tell <laughs> them Who disliked the bid? Oh, there's people that don't even like Ford. They'll dislike what I did. I guess Tim did. Uh, I did not dislike my own bid. <laughs> Mm. Yeah, I, I wanted to see. Uh, the pick never changed? Wait. Oh, okay. Hold on. Let me let me do it again. Um, I don't know why that pick never changed. Let me go to this one and transition. And that, you should see the interior on the screen. And that should be the interior. And then, oh, I got to transition again. Oh, I see. I'm sorry, guys. So let me let me go let me go back to this. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to go back to in, uh, let's see. I'll go back to this interior and I'll transition. Sorry, I did not click the button correctly. So that's the interior uh, dash, and then I'll go to this button and I'll transition. That's the big screen. I was talking about the vertical screen. I'm going to go to this button and hit uh, transition on this four, and this will be the exterior. That's the exterior I was talking about. I do apologize. I didn't realize I didn't write the button. And um, this, let me, I mean, I'll just show you the front end with the, without the, the masking. And so that's the front end. And so that's the front end with the grill and the uh, new lights. So there, there, there is the uh, interior stuff. So, sorry, I apologize. I, I didn't realize I didn't hit the right button. Big up truck and SUV, because I know I can't make it any longer. Uh, the idea of dual channels. Yeah, I think dual channels are... I think that's where I have to be, and I think that you guys have shown me that you want to know more about the stuff I'm doing, so that's what I'm going to end up doing. I think the idea, uh, let's see, my son loves and told me, he said hi. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Hold on, you threw me off there, Ahmad. Hey, Ahmad's son. Hi, how you doing? Uh, love you too. Uh, O'Brien said in every video that he wants a Tundra. He has to get a lot better. I had a Tundra. In Michigan, White Castle, Fago, and Better Made Potato <laughs> Chips. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I lived in Michigan. I graduated high school in Michigan, so I am all about that stuff. I've, I've been around. Uh, yeah, I don't know. COVID has slowed things down for sure. The truck news is slow, and things are slow. <laughs> there is a fan. I have to get through the next last season of Star Trek: Next Generation. <laughs> yeah, uh, get, yeah, get through the uh, get through the uh, uh, binge watching. I'm watching um, uh, American Loggers, Seven Brothers with Timber in their blood. It's somewhat amusing. I like big big vehicles off road, and so they're like cutting down trees, and I just kind of interesting. Oh, you like my sense of humor? It's yeah. Uh, I I do. I tried it. Um, 
I uh, try to be funny. I found that my humor, if I bring my humor out in this stuff, it's going to be, uh, it gets people's, yeah, it gets people excited. Base burn for this. <laughs> I'm talking about base burn. <laughs> I know people, yes, I thought your face was red from drinking during live streams. People say the same thing, and I want to make it clear that it's, my camera's messed up sometimes. Like, my phone, we just, what do we have? The, uh, what do we have? The Jeep Gladiator, a uh, uh, Jeep Wrangler Rubicon, I noticed this. When I get away from my phone, my phone, my face looks red. And on certain videos that I shoot here in the office, my face will look red. And I have to figure out how to edit that in the... Um, I get notification. I have to edit that in my Premiere Pro editing because I've noticed that my, my camera makes my face excessively red. And I don't know why that is. And uh, it's not. See? You can see my complexion in this video and it's not i have a zit here though that's showing stupid no zits uh will be a 20 to 21 raptor that is a great question eric you know they're going to do something that, you know they're not going to kill the raptor that's the raptor's going to stay in production that's not going away the question is going to be are they going to announce the same time or separate times i believe separate times the raptor is such a big halo vehicle that why do the f-150 with that raptor reveal There'll be separate reveals, be separate drive program, separate everything on the Raptor. Uh, the question is going to be what engine they put in that Raptor. Question. Uh, Alex, to break down EV, it's not worth all the money people are spending to develop them. No, it's not. EV still lose money. Um, I did the, I, I shared the Alex breakdown, and I shared the uh, uh, engineering explained. Um, Jason Fenske did a great thing on EV as a towing, and I don't know. I don't see a whole lot of doing. I don't. I don't see a whole lot going on. You see them do something weird at Tailgate? I do. I, tailgate Wars are really real right now, but um, Ford may hold on to their step tailgate, and you may see them during the press conference say, you know, we were the first ones to innovate the step in our tailgate, and we're going to keep that going. Because I don't know if they can do anything different at this point, really, quickly. Um, what if they make a thick aluminum around the intestine that doesn't rip out of the car wash? Yeah, I don't know. Good luck with that. The Raptor is great. It is great. There are the picks. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I, again, I do apologize. I screwed that up. Ford likes to price cars. I'm going to be assumed F hybrid F50 is going to be very expensive. It's going to be, yeah. You know, trucks are very expensive. I wonder if Ford really leaks these. I There's supposed to be spy photographers leak, leak these. It's a whole business, Brian. So if you don't know, spy photographers go sit around. They tell me they sit around gas stations at different places around the proving grounds and wait for vehicles to drive by and take pictures of them. But they're often in the right place at the right time. You get my gist. So somebody's tipping them off, and then they they email me and they sell me these photos, and I buy them occasionally if I think that it's going to turn a profit. And frankly, I've lost my money on most of them. It's like a bad poker, very bad poker. And so I uh, I really am picky now on what videos, what photos I purchase because I want to make sure I make my money back on them. Uh, yeah, all digital, old school gauges. I'm with you. Hey, by the way, Swede got fixed. He's back here. Um, had a, I had a swap wire with the ignition switch that I didn't realize. And he, uh, my mechanic moved around the um, uh, gas filter. So yeah, so that he's back here, and I got to uh, work on the only gauge not working is the uh, temperature gauge, which I'm sure just a, I probably didn't plug in the right wire. So there you go. And I'll have a lot more Swede on my. I think on my. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to have more sweet on this channel or on my video logging, vlogging lifestyle channel. I haven't decided. Uh, the Nicker Gauge Packers look similar to the early 1990s Chrysler Electronic Dashboard. I don't. I just don't like so many, so much electronics. Too many electronics. Uh, let's talk about the Bronco. All right, the Bronco will uh, be. I missed your. I missed your stuff, David. On Sunday, I'm sorry. I had a had a party going on for my son's uh, confirmation. Uh, Catholic Church confirmation. I think that's how it works. I'm not religious, my wife is. Um, I, I, I feel like it's going to go F-150, then Bronco. I feel like Bronco will be the month after. Paint job is a little too... little odd, but I like it. Okay. I have two channels that dirt bike and motorsports easier that way. I agree. I think that's what I'm going to do. You are excited, or you're ex exited. Uh, engine options are going to be the 3.5 liter is going to stay there, the 5.0 liter is going to stay there, and they have that uh, the two the two liter the two point. That's right, they have a third, they have a third, the second EcoBoost, the two point. Is it two point three guys or two point seven? 
I say 2.3. I want to say Chevy is 2.7. I think, and everybody else is 2.7. I think there's 2.3. And your the diesel, as far as I can tell, has been delayed. There's a video I have on this channel. If you type in 2021 F-150 engine, I have a video six, that's six minutes that shows off leaked images of the um, VIN number breakdown that has all the engines listed. There'll be a hybrid version, electric version coming later. So yeah. Auto steel auto sales are still dead. I want to talk about that a little bit. I've been I've been hearing that on the channel quite a bit and I know five people that have bought trucks in the past like month. Like and the stories I'm hearing from dealers are dealers are really in trouble. They're running out of trucks. And the time on lot is getting thin. People are buying the heck out of trucks right now. So um, I keep hearing that auto sales are dead, but trucks just surpass cars and I think that the second quarter will be weak sales. But I think third and fourth quarter will make up for it. I think we're gonna have a a down year, but it's not gonna be that bad. The deals on trucks are insane. I knew my new friend Brad and I were talking about this. You're looking at zero percent APR for 84 months, 120 months or 120 days, no payments. I mean, that's Chevy's deal. I know Ford and, and Ram are about the same. Uh, again, I am seeing all sorts of new vehicles. I got more new vehicles in my neighborhood. I uh, probably one out of every four vehicles driving down the street is brand new. New dealer plates, dealer tag, I mean, the whole nine yards. So people are buying a whole bunch of vehicles right now. This is interesting. My 2021 F-150 got my pal Fred Savage excited as a bull in the cop pasture. <laughs> oh, I like that one a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> That's great. Dirty, sassy liquor face. I know. When is Scotty coming in? No, Scotty's not coming over. We need a road trip to Tim's farm. Uh, that yeah, We can do that. Got about a year left, and we may have to sell the farm. So, yeah. So, if you want to come, better make it happen. Uh, are you driving speed to Michigan? No, I'm not driving speed to Michigan. I'm flying. And, yes, I have um, I have my N95 mask in here. This is the mask I won't be flying with. I have my friend works at the hospital, and I have some new um, a mask, and I have my hand sanitizer, and I have all that stuff. And, frankly, I, I was, if first class isn't booked up, with my status, I'll probably get bumped to first class anyway, so not really that concerned. I'm taking my golf clubs, so though. My dad and I will uh, blow up some steam. I should have realized that the redesigned 2019 Silver Rod does not compete with that four foot fit that came out in 2015. I think Chevy would argue with you there, Joe. Uh, 2022 Raptor, how much are spy photos? Does it depend on the hyper brand? Um, I can't reveal the price because he prices them per outlet. So if my outlet was bigger, he'd raise the price on me. But I can tell you that, like, a uh, car and driver pays a couple thousand, probably for spy photos, I think. Um, and it doesn't matter the brand. The spy photographers, there's like three or four of them, and they all charge about the same price. I do not pay that much because I have a little YouTube channel. So I will continue to have a little YouTube channel <laughs> for as long as I can so I can keep that going. But uh, I have bought them in the past, and uh, I, I don't make my money back. But, again, I bought them when I had like 10,000 subs. Now I'm almost... Now I'm over 29,000, so if the views keep going up, maybe it'll make more sense. But sometimes I just want to buy five photos to get my name out there and keep you guys watching some stuff rather than always having to go to the bigger outlets. So it's kind of a gamble that I take. Reuse those Ford picks, make a separate video. I did. I uh, I have two. I, I noticed. I, I, blah, 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 blah. Hold on. Okay, Gene. Um, I did look at this, and I thought about this from a business standpoint. I don't have much time to do another video before I leave. And the videos I did on a 2021 F-150 have all done very, very poorly. They've done terrible. Views-wise, I thought they'd be great. They've done terrible. And they haven't really, I think one made 30 bucks. So I, I just, I, I don't know that I have time to do something like that um, with what's going on. And I don't know that it's going to be worthwhile. I, it's kind of interesting. I did get my other two reviews done. I have a uh, Nissan Pathfinder and a Kia Seltos reviews that are uploaded on the channel. I seem to do a thumbnail and title tags and that kind of stuff. So those will be going out as I'm gone. And my brother bought a 2020 GMC, yeah, 2020 GMC Sierra 2500 Heavy Duty. And I was thinking I'm going to take my cameras with me and do a video on that while I'm there. I mean, I got some time. And my dad has a 2014 GMC Sierra 1500 Denali. And I think it's 14. Anyways, um, he's had a lot of miles on it, so I thought maybe do a video on that as well. So I thought maybe when I go to Michigan, I will do videos on these trucks, and um, y'all watch them. <laughs> That's kind of the deal. 
Um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I'm glad I got to fix two. I, my mom and pop um, business in town. My neighbor actually down the street owns it, and so it was good. It gave him some business. He charged me very little, and he's got and it's running pretty good. Now he did tell me that I have an issue when I drive him in that he dogs a lot, and it's my accelerator pump. So I think I'm going to spend 250 bucks with him and have the the carburetor rebuilt that he's going to do because he's more of an expert than I am. I enjoy working on this stuff, but let's be honest. I'm much better doing this than I am in the garage. It's just experience. I need more experience. So he's going to do that. And so I think when I get Swede back running the way he should, I will be doing a video on that. And I'm going to hope, I'm going to try to do a car to car, car to car um, uh, video so that I can have my wife drive her Mazda and like put my GoPro on the back of that so you guys can actually see Swede driving around the country. That's my plan. I'm going to see how that works out. The Sweet Channel. Uh, T Rex is going to eat the Raptor. T Rex is exciting. That T Rex should be out there somewhere. My yeah. So Jeff, if you don't, if you haven't been to Jeff's channel, go check out Jeff's channel. He bought a 1960 F100. It's really an interesting truck, and you have an International as well. And so um, he named his International. I can't remember the name. Anyways, he's got some cool trucks over there. I've been watching that. I've been watching Jeff's content. Um, I'm really interested in the rear legroom new 2022 F with the anything. Um, there is some conversation, I saw TFL did a little video on this, where there's conversation about the F-150 being bigger. I know that the Ram 1500 has gotten longer and for more leg room in the rear, and I'm hearing that that may be the same thing. Now, I have been in the Crew Cab F-150, that was a 2019 model, and it had plenty of rear leg room, so, I don't know. And they made the F-250 an inch shorter, because guys like me are complaining. Anyways, they made it shorter, and so I think that I, I think that I think that I'm, I'm just a mess tonight. I can't imagine that the half ton growing that much bigger when they made the F250 sh shorter in height. So it seems like if they made the F150 bigger, they'd have some really interesting um, sizes that'd be the half ton would be the same size as 250 in some regards, and that seems a bit weird to me. So I don't know. I don't know anything about, I, I don't know for sure anything about the um, rear legroom, but they could. They could make it an inch or two bigger, but they it just seems like they're getting so long anyways. I do wonder. Huh. So, uh, Twin Force Fusion, interesting. Uh, <laughs> the Sunday's first eight minutes was no audio. <laughs> um, yeah, 2-7. Sorry, guys. I... Was, I'm just all across the board tonight. Uh, local Ford dealership told me Ford are planning to bring back a version of the Taurus X by having a 2021 Fusion active. So wait and see. I thought they killed the Fusion. You know, Ford dealerships are so interesting. I go to the Ford dealerships in town with my little channel and I get their truck. They tell me all sorts of stuff. And I'm just like, where do you guys hear this stuff? <laughs> just weird. And then I, I had a, a Ford a Toyota dealership guy reach out to me. And he was wondering if I heard anything about a Toyota Hilux Raptor fighter. Which seems a bit bizarre to me, because the Raptor is not sold globally, and the Hilux is only sold globally. So why would you have a Hilux fighter with the Raptor? I don't know. Oh, and by the way, the, the Toyota Hilux is supposed to be unveiled this week, the new one. And I'm hoping that while I'm in Michigan, I can do that video for you guys, because that's going to be uh, very interesting. I want to see what they're doing with that as far as interior and uh, kind of size and such that maybe correlate to newer Toyota trucks. Hmm. Here, here. Yeah, two sevens. All right, you guys are two sevens. Uh, I see the Ford is still making the regular cab F one fifty spice so Yeah, yeah, they'll still make the regular cab. A lot of, a lot of uh, Ford, Chevy, and Ram still do regular cab. Toyota, and Nissan don't do it because there's just not enough market for them. They just don't sell enough volume. But yeah, I, I see it going. I still think it's going to be regular cab will be six and a half or eight foot bed. They won't do a five foot bed because of cafe. So it'll still be six and a half or eight foot. Uh, just saw the aluminum thin on the first gen aluminum Tim with the ripping. Oh, those photos are bad. Have you guys seen those photos in the crash photos? It definitely looks like a pop, a beer can. It looks like a beer can got ripped open. Yeah, it is interesting. Um, might, but actually ripping. No kidding. I, I, uh, I could see them making some changes to aluminum. I mean, that that 2014 model was the first time they did anything with aluminum at all, at all. And so I could see them making some changes. I know there's some metallurgy technology improvements and how they're molding the aluminum, and they made some changes. Um, the metal industry has really taken a lot about aluminum lately as far as improving that. So I can see, I can see them different there. 
<laughs> guys, we know engine sizes. I know you guys are all over it. I just couldn't remember if it was a two seven or I feel like they have a two three two. Two three two. No, no. I feel like that Ford has a two point three liter as well, and maybe that's what they use in like their um, Escape and the uh, Eco Sport. It's not Eco Sport. It's Eco Sport with the Echo Boat Boost. But I feel like they have a smaller version. Uh, I think they're going to be concentrated on chassis and interior, mostly in powertrain, mostly the same. That's my guess too. Yep. I imagine it's going to have more high strain steel. The chassis will be lighter. It'll be stronger. The truck's going to weigh a little bit less, be a little bit better fuel economy by a smidgen. The powertrain's the same. You know, the thing that is a little frustrating with Ford is, especially with the Super Duty did this, is that they're they're so much into consistently improving their products that it makes a letdown when a new model comes out because they've consistently improved them. So, you know, there's not that many changes that that I foresee. And it was funny, doing that Ford Super Duty unveil in Arizona, they were like, so we kind of teased us around. We made a bunch of changes for the year. So here's all the changes we did. <laughs> like They had to go back and be like, yeah, we really showed you guys a lot. And you're all probably confused because we're a little confused too. So this is what we actually did. And I think that's going to be the same thing about the um, about this 2021 model, is that they 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 keep making tweaks to it to stay relevant, which is fine, absolutely fine. But you don't get like a huge like ta da da like like so Toyota when they do the new Tundra, it's going to be like oh my gosh, it's going to be like holy cow, all this stuff is different because they waited so long. Where Ford is like just incrementally keep changing them. Yeah. Yeah, Brian's been trying to buy a truck. It's interesting. He's had some issues with that. And uh, I hope you have some better luck, Brian. It's been interesting hearing from you. Uh, that's a great name. Maurice. What? What is it kind of loot? People bought after 9-11-2 and it killed a natural buying cycle. Tim Apalooza. <laughs> Tim stole that. No, I didn't. My, f <laughs> my friend works there and he had a couple extra ones. Where are protection to? I don't know. I'm not really good with glasses. I have a face shield. But so United has been cleaning their planes like crazy. So the, aer the airport itself has been sterilized like crazy. And the I just feel like if I can go to Walmart and come home and not get COVID, I could probably go through the airport and come home and not get COVID. I don't know. I mean, I could be wrong. I did get a haircut today, by the way. Sexy haircut. Thank you for asking. Very sexy. I know you guys know that tonight. And I had to... I had to um, Went to Great Clips, and I had to wear my mask. So I went to the door, and I put my mask on, and then I uh, had to knock on the door, and I you have to do online check-in and maybe call from the parking lot or talk to them at the door. Anyways, I did online check-in, and I walked in the door, and I had she had to take my temperature, and I had to take hand sanitizer, and then I got to sit and get my hair cut. But my mask is not the medical one with what goes around your ears. This one goes around the back of your head, right? And so I had these I had these bands around my head. I had to move them a few times, let her cut my hair. And then the haircut was like twelve bucks. And I was like, really? All that effort for twelve dollars for a haircut? So I tipped her five bucks. Because I you know, she's slow and there's not much going on. So I was like, here, here's five bucks. So she had a good hour, I was there, I helped the best I could. I, I'm sorry, I'm not a $100 tip person. I don't have that kind of cash. But it was a very interesting experience. And then I walked over to Home Depot. And, um, yeah, nobody in the store had a mask on. <laughs> it was like, I could see Home Depot from Great Clips. I don't know. I, I don't know what to make of this stuff. I don't either. It's really strange. Uh, wear a Tyvek suit and play you know. Tim hits 100,000 subscribers, we'll get the $3,000 smart shots. <laughs> what happens, though, Brian, is you laugh, but what happens then is car and driver and motor train get those spy photos before I do. And so that's how they do it. They'll email them the day before. I'll see them. You guys are like, hey, Tim, did you see the spy photos? And I got to wait a day, and I get an email, and I'm allowed to buy them. Now, I'm down the pecking order sometimes. I'll get an email two days later, and I'll be able to buy them. And so, yes... As I get more subscribers, I will pay more for the buy photos, but I will get them sooner. They have a whole game on this. They've really thought this through. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Engage. Uh, likes, dislikes, also. Any engagement you guys do, thumbs up, it's all it's all benefit. I really do appreciate it. it. This channel is doing well, and you guys have made it happen. Your support and through subscribing makes it happen. The more you guys encourage people, other people to subscribe, the bigger this channel gets, the more fun I have, the more access to vehicles I get, the more trips I go on, that kind of stuff. Well, without COVID. But the more vehicles I get, the more variety of vehicles I get, the more automakers pay attention to me. The more my emails get responded to, with the more subscribers I get, and uh, David Nissan Nation Pod Productions understands that. <laughs> uh, Sixty-four thousand Wrangler is insanity. I thought so too, and I made that point at the end of the video, and I knew people were going to be arguing with me, but I know people that sixty-four thousand dollars is nothing, and they buy these Rubicons. And I was watching this on the plane once. There was a, uh, you know, how they have like the, the restaurant rescue. The guy goes in a restaurant. Uh, Rescues a restaurant, the bar rescue, that kind of stuff. There was a guy who was rescuing um, Jeep upfitters. He was rescuing these companies who were trying to upfit Jeeps, and he had an accessible Jeep. And he walked in this business that had six bays for Jeeps, right across from a Jeep dealership, right? So you buy the Jeep, drive across, and this guy's going to upfit things for you. And uh, he looked at the guy and said, each bay, each bay should be a minimum, I think it was $45,000. That means you buy a sixty thousand dollar Rubicon across the street, you drive over and put forty five grand in it before you drive it home. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" Like, if there was a rewind button on the plane, I would have been rewinding that, listen to that again. A hundred thousand dollars for an upfitted, lifted Jeep Rubicon. Now you're gonna drive to Walmart. That's <laughs> insane. That is insane. Is a brother with a hot girlfriend? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. What motor brother's truck? Oh, he's got the gas. I don't think he went diesel. I think he's got a 6.6 gas. I will check it out, though. I I, um, I need to see what it, when it, he bought. He was he was having a hard time buying that truck. They wouldn't sell it to him because of COVID. And finally got to buy it. Hard to believe that views Scotty Kilmer generates for ranting about old Toyota Econo boxes fit for the junkyard he's a millionaire. He has figured out the, um, uh, what is it called? It? Uh, bait, bait and switch, the um, clickbait. He has figured out clickbait, and I met the, I didn't meet him. I saw him. I was close to him in Austin. No. is in Texas Auto Show. Houston. I was in Houston. It was there, and... Uh, and I should have talked to him. And I want to get him on camera talking to him in person because he is a weirdo. He's so strange. He's like a, he's like the guy that would sit with you at the bar and talk about UFOs and what he did in the 70s. The 60s. 60s and 70s. That, that's that kind of guy. Like just, just he's so far out there. It is bizarre. And uh, that's how he is in person. So, yeah, it's pretty interesting. But he, he's been on the longer. He is... He's done it. He has um, he has done a great job, and he's built a channel. And kudos to him. He's a ton of people who watch his stuff. I uh, yeah, I can't do it. Uh, so Tim is a broke family member driving a fifty-year-old truck. <laughs> no, I, I, I get seventy, like sixty to seventy vehicles a year. So I mean, I drive sweet because why would I drive a new vehicle? Yeah, and someday I will uh, I will have a new vehicle. I think Tim should do an oil change video. <laughs> I make a big enough deal about that, don't I? If I had a friend who had a Ranger, if I had a friend who had a Ranger, I, I, I yeah, on the Ranger, I see on the Ranger, I would do it on the Ranger. I would, uh, I would do the, uh, I would do the oil change on the right Ranger, and uh, if I had, a, if I knew somebody, if somebody would buy a Ranger. My neighbor uh, Brian Johnson was thinking about buying a Ranger, and I'm thinking if you buy the Ranger, I will pay you. I will pay for the oil. It could be brand new with 100 miles on it. I will pay the oil and the filter to change it. I would. Uh, Frederick. Yes, Frederick. Oh, yeah. Hey, no problem. So, Jeff Corday. So, if you click on Jeff Corday Motorsports, you'll find us. Uh, Scotty Cummer reminds me of Carlos Ghosn. Scotty buying subscribers for views related to Carlos wanting insane mark share by selling the fleets. <laughs> uh, I don't get crew cab. I don't want sweaty construction workers in my truck with me right in the back. <laughs> if the cab's the same, would interior space be the same? Hmm. 
You mean well, if the cap, if the radar cap is smaller, you, you're yeah, your interior space inside the in the front of the cab, yes, that'd be the same. But in the rear of the cab, that's where that changes. Uh, Joe's not wrong. Take the cheap plastic interiors and XLT. Yeah, they could. They definitely could do that. Remember that says the exterior dimensions are bigger. But yeah, I, I've uh, Jiro, I, I've seen those rumors as well. Or I'm probably saying that wrong. I want to say it's Hero because I think the J is an H. Um, I have heard, seen that too. I've seen those photos too, and I feel like it's just the angle. But it could be a little bit wider, and it could be they could make it bigger. Mm. I heard, heard the helix was coming stateside. Yeah, we're gonna have a. New total will fix the trans and taco helix. Maybe. Um, any news with Dram Dakota? I uh, oh, that still comes around. It's a rumor. I did a video on it that they would change their minds. Uh, I've talked to Ram about it for years, and they said no. Um, I think the Jeep Gladiator selling the way it is. I think there's still no. Um, but there's a ton of rumors on that, and. It's sparked by some bad journalism. So, um, who is that guy's name? I can see him. Big guy. Um, anyways, he is the head of Ram Global. Uh, Ram Global. Here we go. I'll look it up. Anyways, he made a comment that said, Ram Trucks Global. I, I'm sorry. It's going to bug me. So I'm, um... No, uh, that's that's Mike Reed. No, Reed Bigland. No, that's not him. Um, I can't. Bob Heckbloom. Bob Heckbloom is the uh, regional is is the head of Ram International. He's trying to take the brand international. He made a comment that Ram's looking at doing a metric one ton, and some poor journalism in the U.S. market said, "Oh my God, Ram Dakota is coming." A metric one ton is just same thing as Toyota Hilux. It is not a Tacoma. The one tons are narrower, they're shorter, they're taller, they ride rougher, they haul more payload because they're made to be a replacement for a full-size truck over there in global land. Kind of makes sense. Anyway, so like in Europe, you can't get a full-size truck to park down the streets. They just don't do it, so they do these metric one tons. So he said Ram's looking at doing this. So they're talking about taking a Peugeot, Peugeot. I know I say that wrong all the time. The thing about taking a global truck already and putting a Ram badge on it, that's basically what they're trying to do, make the Ram badge go global. I think I said that clearly. Ish. So that's what they're trying to do. There's been no conversation, there's been no statement from a U.S. Ram official saying they're going to build a Dakota. Now, Mike Manley, who used to be in charge of that, and now the new guy I've interviewed, I'm... Just bad at names tonight. The new Ram CEO I've interviewed, or the Ram head, um, I see his name, Mike, Mike, mm, Mike something or other. Anyways, I talked to him off the record in Texas, and um, Ram CEO, Ram CEO, Ram. Mike, no, Mike, no, Mike Nolan, yeah, so, um, Mike, anyways, 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 I talked to him on, on, uh, in, uh, Texas, and he said point blank that they're not, they're looking. They're always looking at it. They're always looking at it. Clearly, I mean, hello. Why wouldn't they always look at that? But there's really no solid plans as of that was like a year and a half ago. So there may be some more solid plans now, and there could be a whole lineup if you believe the Jeep Ladder doesn't solve what they want to buy do and yeah, yeah. But I mean, how big is the mid-sized truck market? So you're looking at uh, we've gone from like two competitors to now eight. The mid-size truck market is the fast-growing market in the country, but how much bigger will it get? That's a big question. Uh, off top, I'd like, like to get to Hulu. Is it good? Yeah, I watch Hulu all the time. Two, three in the range. Yes, Mustang and Explorer. Boom. Eric saw about it. That's what I was thinking about. For GM, it made too many motor options. And do they have the small? Yeah. With cars made, about three, four made in Mexico. I like Nissan's going to be simple. Sometimes I'd be wanting more again. 
Tim Cooper saw the new video release from Ford about the Bronco. Oh, they, uh, I saw it. Are, are you guys more interested? If you guys, you guys aren't asking this, I, I'm really curious. Do you guys see the video of the, um, the T-tops on the GMC Hummer truck? That the, the, that's topless now? Nobody's asking about that. And I didn't do a video on it because I didn't think it was very interesting. But you guys are talking about it. The 207 is com composite, graphite, and block. Why don't they have the other boost engine? Hmm. Now, that's a good question, Eric. That's something I'll make sure I uh, check out. Some of these I'm doing away with Envy Vans and Canton. The Envy Van is ugly. Did you did you put a bowl on your head? <laughs> I did not. It's a fan. Uh, no, I don't think there was a fan on. I don't think there was. <laughs> uh... Yeah, where I'm at store in Minnesota, and I blend in. I go to Wisconsin, wear a mask, and everybody looks at me like I'm out of my mind. It's so strange. I, so I wear, I wear a mask when I go to Walmart. I go wear a mask. My wife is with me, but if I'm going to Home Depot or Menards for something real fast, I don't wear a mask. I'm sorry. It's a big store, and I keep my distance, and I make sure I'm not within six feet of anybody. But yeah, I, I definitely at Walmart when I'm shoulder to shoulder, mask. If I go into some place that's got lots of people. Mask. We go to the nursing, not the nursing, but we go to the greenhouse, I wear a mask, even though I faint in there because it's so freaking hot. But I do wear it on occasion. In the airport, I'm going to wear my mask. It's, I, I don't know. It's like, what? I don't I don't know what to do either. I mean, but it, it's really strange. Now, if you go to Menards, their staff all has masks on, even though they wear them poorly. They're always like, uh, they, you go into Menards, or like, Menards is like a Lowe's. If you don't know what Menards is, it's like a Lowe's, Home Depot, same kind of store. They're like this. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you got to wear it over your nose. That's how that counts. And so the staff wears them, but then the staff doesn't, I don't know, but the Home Depot doesn't wear them. But then Menards won't let kids under 14 in the store by themselves without, at all. They don't let kids under 14 in the store at all. No parent supervision, doesn't matter. Home Depot is like, game on, come on in, guys. Buy whatever you want to buy. Uh, you don't sit in a grocery store for three hours with the same people. Not as safe as a plane. Eh, you know, that could be. Where you guys live is still a small instant, low instance of COVID. It is. And so, again, I'm taking my hand sanitizer. I'm wearing my mask. I'm doing that stuff that I should be doing. And so I just, but I, I have to go. It's it's a family issue. I, it's not work issue. It's a family issue. I'll do some work there and, um, you know, bring you guys some videos. But it's it's a family issue I have to go to. Acer wearing a mask on the work for some area. Yeah, it's strange. You subbed it about a thousand. Yeah, you did. Too big to fail. I remember early on you were you were on some of the comments. I've had some people on this channel for now a year now, which year year and a half, which is crazy to me. Um, and then new people come on, they get a lot of energetic, and it's cool. It's it's exciting. The stuff just keeps growing, keeps growing, it, and it's exciting to see. You could do some option to Canada and bring this ninety two hundred dollars. $9,200 for Eco Diesel in Canada. Holy cow. One of the fellas that down Papua New Guinea are wearing a mask. Yeah. I, it's like you can go out to Wyoming, out to the farm, and or go to a store in Wyoming, and it's a different world. And you go, if I were to go to Denver, it'd be a totally different experience. It just depends where you're at, major cities, what your political status is in the rural areas versus cities, how big of an issue it is. I mean, my friend went from Chicago to Florida to help her dad. Her dad fell, had ble bleeding in his brain, and his mom, or her mom, wasn't capable to take care of him, so she hopped on a plane to fly to Florida to help him out with physical therapy to get him back on his feet and doing all right. And she was downtown Florida without any, nobody had masks on. She wore hers. But nobody else had masks on. Nobody's doing hand sanitizer. So it was just a strange world down there. And so, I mean, I'm not going to post a whole lot about being in Michigan. I'm telling you guys because you guys are on the live stream and I want to explain I won't be here next week. But I'm not going to post a lot about it because either people think we have this gigantic second wave coming and we're all going to die. Or people think that we've, we're doing about as much well as we can and we're going to be okay. We're going to be safe. It's like doomsday versus like the world is going to be awesome. I just, it's so strange right now and I don't want to get in arguments and I'm glad nobody here has asked about the protests because I really don't want to comment on that stuff either. Um, I feel bad for the gentleman who died. I feel like the cop 
lost his job and is now got third degree murder. That's cool. I mean, that's he definitely made a mistake. But looting and pillaging your own city because you're mad about that? I mean, that's not what MLK did, and that's just not. I just I, I can't I, I just don't stomach that, and I don't want to get into a big political debate about it. I understand. I have many black friends. I have many people in my family that are that are in law enforcement. I understand both sides of it. I can see both sides of it. I'm not trying to say one side's right, one side's wrong, um, at all. But let's stop looting your city. That makes more. It's crazy. Uh, would not spend forty five thousand. I would spend five. Jeep is not reliable. We'll never spend again. It's interesting. Jeep is like the least reliable brand out there, and people just buy the crap out of them. They buy on the lifestyle, and they they don't care about being uh, uh being an unreliable vehicle. It's more fun to do yourself. Look, kids and such. Yeah. That's that's not cash. Yeah, it's a it was a show. It may be like Jeep Rescue or something. If you guys Google it, it's really interesting. It's just really interesting. Um, let's see. I clicked the button yesterday. <laughs> Demanded the code answer. <sighs> Come on, God darn it! All right, there we are. Da, da, da. I will catch up, guys. Cause we're running out of time. He's got a character funny guy. He is really. He's got it. Could Scotty make repairs in Sweden? No. Uh, how goes the concrete? Sasan, I have, I'm there. I have a concrete mixer. I have to get an uh, updated tag for my trailer. My trailer expired, and it's from the farm, so my aunt is working on a tag. I'm going to buy a pallet of concrete bags from Home Depot and put it outside. I have stained the fence. We planted four trees. I moved. I put a drain in the yard. I cut a hole in my um, house and put my dog door in the wall. Looks fantastic. I got that done, and I got um, moved my sprinkler heads. We planted four or three three willows up front. So I'm now at the stage transition to do my concrete projects. I'm at that stage, and I got to wait for the trailer tag. So um, yes, thank you for asking. I will have an update on that because when I get back from Michigan and I, and I video live stream, I'm, I'm I want to pour a sidewalk really badly, and I need to get that done. And I just have not got that done. No, you can like both. <laughs> Scotty's fine. He's just a weirdo. All right, you can like both. I watch Scotty sometimes. It's fun. He's a, he's a character, and I enjoy some of the stuff. There's a guy in a Ram group I'm on that has 2020 Ram 3500. Cummins and spent 34000 for a lift and tires and wheels. Just wish I had friends with cool cars. I You have a friend with me, Brian. I have a cool car. Truck. Uh, ultra, ultra nice job in the F250. Oh, you guys like that? No, I mean F150, F250. Share cab, same space. Oh, I don't think they're going to... Ooh. If they do share cabs, they should have the same space, but no. Uh, I live in Nebraska. Uh, I don't have Scotty Mike. I, I, so you guys are going to laugh. So Juan, Juan laugh at this. I have to make a putter purchase. I, I need a new putter, and I'm pretty serious about golf, guys. Uh, you should know. And I'm debating between this, this Bentonelli or Bertinelli putter and a Scotty Cameron. Yes, they call it a Scotty Cameron. So I could have a Scotty in my bag. <laughs> I could, if I have 400 bucks to spend on the darn things. So, yeah, you guys need to give me some more uh, uh, super chats <laughs> so I can buy a putter. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. That's a lot of coin for a putter. I have a problem with that one. Uh, I just wanted to about the Dakota. Yeah, yeah. Dakota, read Big Line. Yes. <laughs> Jeff is on it tonight. Yeah, read Big Line. Me and Michigan Dry Dauber has demanded Dakota answer. <laughs> Yes, Fiat Toro. Yep, that's what I was getting at. Fiat Toro could be the new Dakota or Ram Rampage. Yes, new Ram Rampage debut. No, I have no idea in the Grand Wagoneer. Everything is like totally um, delayed. So I would think July, July, August. Well, here's what's going to happen: is things are going to change. Things are going to slow down, and then um, I'll be in a plane for like two months. Uh, Hummer equals yawn. Yep, yuppie truck. That's yeah, going to be interesting. New GTR comes and looks like the Skyline. Hummer equals GM issues. Hmm. Yeah, it's ugly in the Ram for mustard. I agree. The MV van is just ugly. And, uh, Nissan going under. Ooh. Criminal truck. T tops. No one. I think we need to get Nissan another brand to give us a truck where we can be road trip to cha put channels. Yeah. Yeah, we could. I don't know about road tripping right now. How did your wife and how did you and your wife decide on the Mazda? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, Juan's been here for a year. Um, my I had been driving a bunch of SUVs and she was finally shopping for an SUV. I've been encouraging her for a long time. And uh, we had gotten permission for her to drive a couple. I don't. 
So I get permission to drive them all, and then with her shopping, I asked for special permission. So she had a chance to drive the Mazda, and so she drove the Mazda, and she was like, oh my gosh. She just she likes a good driving performance vehicle. She likes something that has a spirited drive. She likes she likes turbos. She likes, well, that one's not even a turbo. That's natural aspirated, but she likes that get up and go. And uh, so she drove it, and and then we went and looked, and she was, this, Equinox was just okay. She didn't like the performance. The engine wasn't really there. She thought the Mazda looked sexy outside, and she thought the powertrain was really good, and she liked the, the steering inputs of it and how it performs. And then we looked at the um, Honda. We're going to buy a, a CRV, but CRV was just okay, and she already had a CRV, and she didn't. She wanted to do something different. Um, we looked at Ford Explorer, and they didn't really, didn't really, didn't really like it. It just was a little bit bigger than she wanted, and didn't really have, didn't really fit. And uh, what else we looked at? We looked at Nissan Rogue, but the problem was we had no Nissan dealer in the area, and we kind of nixed that early on because it just, it's okay, it's, but it's not again a spirited driving. And so the Mazda was the best spirited driving in class, CX-5 without the turbo, and so we ended up going down to Fort Collins, which is about an hour and a half away, and leased it. I said, I leased the, the Mazda, and I really leased the Mazda because um, I was traveling a lot, and the payment was 150 bucks less, so it was 300 bucks a month a lot to lease it, which is nothing, really, and um, especially with new vehicles, the way new vehicle prices are, I should say, more correctly. Um, and so I wanted to lease it for that, and I wanted, I wanted my kids and my wife to be in the and the latest vehicle with the most safe technology and the most reliability. So I was in Dallas one year, uh, I don't know, not one year, I'd say a few months before we bought it, and she had problems that her Honda wasn't performing right. She had 225,000 miles on it, whatever the deal was. And uh, I don't want that. I don't want, I don't want to be at the airport getting a phone call that my wife's car is acting up. It's just not okay. And so the kids are getting bigger. And so in three years, we'll probably have to go a full-size SUV. And three years after that, we'll probably have to go to a smaller SUV because they'll have their driver's license. And then three years after that, they'll be out of the house. So we'll probably go down to subcompact, maybe a luxury subcompact at that point. And then, then by the time we get there, she'll be a few, I don't know, a few years away from retirement. And so I told her, I said, you know what? We're going to lease a vehicle the rest of our lives. I'm fine with that. We'll make a car payment. We'll make the one. Sweet. I, I pay five bucks a month for insurance, whatever the deal is. But I really want her to be in a very safe vehicle, the latest safe technology, and something that is very is reliable. That's all under warranty, and so that's what we went with. And she liked she really liked that the way the Mazda performed. And if you, if you ask many auto journalists, most auto journalists will tell you the Miata, the Mazda Miata is what they love, you know. But they don't have families. When you have a family, it's a lot different situation with uh, cargo rooms like that. And so the one of the best driving SUVs is the CX-5. It really is. And so what's funny, we looked at it today, we've owned the vehicle eight months, or we've leased the vehicle eight months, whatever you, however you want to consider leasing, people have different views on us. We've had it for eight months, and she has 4,000 miles on it, thanks to COVID. <laughs> so, I mean, we have a 12,000 mile a year lease, and we're like, she's like, so do you want to go to like Montana for a weekend? <laughs> do you want to go to like Oregon? You know, it's like, well, I don't know, it's kind of crazy. It's uh, it's interesting. Uh, too big to fail. I'll change my name often to suit my person, present personality. Time to change again, maybe. That's yeah, yeah. I I think I've 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 I followed a couple of them. I think. Uh, Nissan, they, big city required to wear a mask, but let uh, riders loot the business at night. Yeah. <sighs> Makes no sense. Here on P E I in Canada, no mask unless you go for a haircut. Have to wear one yourself for that. I was some darn happy to have haircut mask or not at that point. <laughs> Protesting a 2020 frontier. That's funny. Um, another two bucks from David. Thank you, David. Um, Tim, can you imagine if this COVID happened back when you were 16, 18? How could you pick up chicks wearing a mask at parking with you? <laughs> no comment. That probably reminds me of the riots in the late 60s. It is. Yeah, I, how does a barber cut it with a mask on around my ears? Um, actually, they did it pretty well. The guys who were in there with the, med with the medical mask, the ones that just go around the ears, they took care of it. It wasn't a problem. Mine was a bit of an issue. What trim F-150 do you hope to get it for review? I will probably get the Limited and the Platinum, but I will go get the go to my dealership and get the XLT. That XLT video was really good. Yeah, see you in two weeks. Thanks, Brian. Uh, that did really well for me. So I will do some more of the XLT uh, S STX, XXT. What the hell do they call that thing? Penistar proven engine, awful expensive vehicle at Penistar for a hole in the wall. <laughs> Why does Ford not make the Harley-Davidson tires because of the license agreement? Um, I, it's just... 
um, that other company does a better, really just does a better job on it. They just, they do. And so I think that they coordinate all the license agreements and Ford just couldn't keep up on that stuff. Uh, cheap sharks. I think I saw Scotty at Woodstock at 69. <laughs> Sorry, it's quite it quite was there. <laughs> and mini golf course. An option, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I have a passion for golf too. I know it's, but I have passion for hunting. I have three rifles, or a shotgun and two rifles. I need a new shotgun next year. Uh, <laughs> talking about Jeeps, but it's terrible. I pulled up. <laughs> yes, you get like red, you get green putters, blue putters, blue one, big putter. Yeah. Duke was a terrible attempt, just saying. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Penn Star, the most reliable. We have Penn Star, 24,000 mile van. I would putt with a putter. My dad putt, he putt with them, putt with me when he, if I putt with putter to putt, and the putter is putt. Here's the funny thing, guys. If you guys realize this, Joe, and other people realize this, is that pickup truck talk, right? The original words, I had plus SUV. But if you look at it, I had P-U-T-T. So my, my acronym could have been PUT. See, I told you. Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross person for a compact SUV. Yeah, it's too cheap. I love leasing. Great idea to lease. Yeah, thanks. Mitsubishi ugly. Uh, DTR, good evening. Hope weather well, getting great. Hey, Purnell is here. 2.5 Turbo Mazda is great. I was just going to wrap up, Purnell. I'm sorry. I have to watch a recap. It was a funny live stream, I thought. Boy, we really went through STX. Really went through all the questions quickly. I had an hour. I'm at an hour. I think that's about it, guys. How do you pronounce Lariat? Lariat or Lariat? I say Lariat. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that was it. That was a the STX, which I'm sorry, I'm not good at. It's not my strong suit to all this acronym stuff. Anyways, that was they told me in town was the best selling package he offered. Somebody asked me, they said, would you do a manual Chevy Silverado versus a, a, a manual window, roll-up uh, ro roll window, manual locks, Chevy Silverado work truck versus a Ford work, work truck, same configuration. Manual windows, manual locks, that kind of stuff. And I told the guy in the comments, I said, I can't. The local Ford dealer doesn't even order those anymore. He doesn't even he doesn't stock them. He doesn't even care. He doesn't even stock those trucks anymore. So I can't even do that kind of comparison because... The dealers don't even buy them. So I thought it was pretty interesting. All right, that's it, guys. I am out of here. I will see you guys in two weeks. I will be safe. I will wear my mask, my hand sanitizer, and I will be safe. And after my 12-hour travel day, did you know that airlines have cut down flights so much that I'll be 12 hours in the plane tomorrow because I have to fly from here to Denver, Denver to Dulles, Dulles, Detroit. Mm, sucks. Uh be day limited dealer and buy direct manufacturer that is coming yeah thanks guys thanks for watching uh we, dave and i have done a live stream chat together um uh it's on the uh, on his channel you can look it up so thanks guys thanks for watching send your comments uh to me or down below email tim pickup truck talk .com. look for the new golf channel coming it is coming i'm working on it it's coming trust me and the lifestyle channel i'll talk about a variety of things but hey thanks for watching guys i will see you down the road.